What's up guys, this is Steven from techmaker.tv. This is building a stock market tracker with React.js part 10. So in part nine, we had just finished getting the data to come back um, with only looking up the last trading day once. So we had bumped that up into this stock list component. So we fetched the last trading day after the component mounts. That triggers this component did update down in our stock row. And then once we have the last trading date, um, and we're checking here if preflop's last trading date is null, um, what that does is it kicks off um, the update for getting the yesterday's close for everything. So at the end of the last video, we were looking at this, and we still have the same problem, which is that uh, we can end up fetching the close price for the previous day uh, prior to actually getting today's price back. And so what that ends up resulting in is we get these negative 100% here because we get the close from yesterday and it's saying, hey, you basically lost all this value. And that's just got to do with the sequence of loading the data and then how all of the math is set up. So while this was a step in the right direction, this is not nearly enough to actually uh, account for the situation in which we should actually go ahead and get yesterday's close. Okay, so let's take a look at this in a little bit more depth just to remind ourselves what's going on here. I'm gonna put this console down on the bottom so that we see again what's going on. Um, and let me go ahead and do a quick global search here for console.log to make sure that we're not logging out stuff we don't need to log out at the moment. So we don't need to log out this. Um, what else do we have? Uh, all right, so we don't want to log out right there right now. So that clears our area up here just a little bit. Okay, so what I want to do is just refresh our memory. So what's, what's interesting to me, and the reason that we did this, if you will recall, is because if we comment this out, well, it's not even commented out. Let's just say if this dot props dot last trading date does not equal null, because that sort of sounds logical, right? We only want to update all this stuff if that's not null. Um, let's console dot log here. And so you can see here that we're just running up a tally. So let me undo really quick. So the reason it's counting up like that is because there's other things triggering this component did update and it's triggering it all the time. I thought about this a fair bit and the, the way that I'm understanding it at this moment, it feels like this is a little more complex than I gave it credit for initially. So what I had thought of was like, okay, maybe what we could do here is say something like if Prefprops dot last trading date equals null and uh, this dot state dot price does not equal null, then do this. So let's run this and see what happens. So you'll see that in actual fact we only get some of the data. So what happens is this is true for one of these updates, right? like on only one occasion. So this is gonna go from being null to not null. And so what happens is all this does is it says, hey, you can't execute all of this if we don't already have the price. So it does in fact actually prevent us from getting those negative 100%, but it doesn't really solve the problem because now we just don't get any data for that. So what we really need to do is have some other kind of flag or something that says, hey, this thing did switch, so now I definitely have it. Um, and once we get the price back, then we can go ahead and execute this. The reason that's a little bit complicated is because as you saw, and you'll see in the end, it's not super complicated. It's just a little bit more than like a surface complication. Um, as you saw, we will ping the API constantly if we try to check if this has, is set. So we need to set a flag, I think, and say, hey, we just got the last trading date, and then once we actually set it, we clear the flag so that we don't query this over and over and over again. So um, let's work on that in the next bit. We may have to rework it a couple of times to get it just right, So, um, but that's what we're gonna do here. 
Okay, so what we're going to do is split this into a couple of sections here. So then, and you'll see what I mean in just a second. So what we're going to do is we're going to have some conditions that if they're true, we execute all this stuff. And if and what we're going to do here is we're actually going to set some variable to be true. Um, and we don't actually want this right here. This is going to go in here. So if something and this dot state dot price does not equal null, go ahead and do all this stuff. So what I would like to do is say, and in actual fact, I don't, there could be other updates hypothetically or theoretically, I guess, that trigger before this, uh, this happens. So like, for example, let me clarify what I mean. There could be other events in the app that cause an update to occur prior to us actually getting a last trading date. So in that case, last trading date would be null, but we wouldn't have a new one. So we actually need to add another condition here just to be safe. Say if pref props last trading date equals null and this dot props dot last trading date does not equal null. So that means we definitely have one and it was just null. So this, this condition right here means, hey, this thing just switched. We have it now and we didn't have it last time. So what I want to do is go ahead and say this.set state. And I'm going to add a new flag here. And I'm going to say um, can, uh, can set close. And I'm going to say that that is true. Okay. And something is not defined, obviously. So what we're going to do here now is we're going to say if this dot state dot can set close. Okay. So now everything came in, but this still isn't quite right. And I'll show you why. So if we refresh this a few times, I bet we still get a hundred percent somewhere. No, it seems to be coming in better, but this still isn't quite what I'm anticipating to happen. So what I want to do down here is at the end of this uh, set, in this set state, this will basically ensure that uh, that this never runs again. So what we can do is say can set close is false. And so what's going to happen here is essentially, well, let me back up just a little bit. So this part, so this top condition, setting this flag and this is enough to make sure that our data loads in the correct order. Changing this to be false ensures that this doesn't run again. And let's take a look at what happens if we comment it out and we put a console.log. So if I save this, we should see here running up a bunch, okay? If we save it now with that flag set, we get it five times, which makes perfect sense because we got five stocks. So that's really what that's for. It's saying, hey, we don't want to execute this thing constantly. So just prevent it. And, and what this is doing is this little mechanism that we've come up with here allows this block of code to run at precisely the right moment. So once we have a trading date in hand and once we have a price back, and it prevents it from running repeatedly so we don't want to burn through our quota over on the API. So I want to do a tiny bit of refactoring here. Um, this isn't strictly necessary, but I tend to like to do this. Um, so what I want to do is write a method called set can close. And this thing is going to take pref props. And then what I'm going to do here is just cut this and paste it right here. We don't need to return anything because we're actually uh, you know, just operating on the state. But what we can do is first, before we do anything else, we can say this dot set can close prev props. And that kind of straightens out our methods just a little bit because I don't like to see super long methods in actual fact. So 
One other thing we need to do probably, and we're not going to do it right now, but I'd like to pull these out because this is essentially like core logic and we have it buried inside of this component did mount. So what we'd like to do is actually probably call a method from down inside this dollar change area. We also need to work on this naming a little bit. So we're definitely going to do a refactoring episode. I'm actually going to go ahead and change up one thing though because this is bugging me. So what, what I really want to say right here is set can get close and I'm going to say set can retrieve close and I'm going to call this the same down here and then right here instead of can set close I'm going to call this can retrieve close and let's see how this reads. Just to make sure that everything's still working over here. It looks like it is. Okay. So the reason I'm doing that is because set can retrieve close. So that's clear that we're setting something. So we're setting something in the state. The flag that we actually care about is whether or not we are allowed to go get the close. And in fact, this method here on the stock is called get yesterday's close. So we're saying now in our logic, if this state if this state can retrieve close and the price is not null, go ahead and retrieve the close. So I think that naming makes a little bit more sense. All right, well, that's pretty cool. That's working much, much better. That's it for this episode. In the next episode, we may do a little bit of refactoring or we may move on to being able to click on these things and then open up their charts for the day and so on. Um, I'll have to see uh, what I'm feeling like doing, but either way, in the next episode or two, we'll be starting to add some more UI components, style this out a bit more, add more functionality. So I think this is working pretty well. I think it's pretty cool. Um, let me know what you think down in the comments. And if you haven't already, go ahead and subscribe to the channel while you're down there, and I will talk to you in the next episode.